Yeah, Kelly, the Trump administration wants Fannie and Freddie recapitalized, released from government conservatorship, but of course the devil is in the details. And Treasury's plan does not end the dividend sweep of billions of dollars instituted in 2012 under the Obama administration. As of the end of Q2, Fannie Mae had made $181.4 billion in dividend payments to Treasury, Freddie Mac $119.7 billion, according to earnings releases. Now, those exceed the amounts drawn by the two from Treasury by a collective $109.7 billion. But the Treasury plan does recommend Fannie and Freddie be allowed to increase their capital buffers, which are currently at $3 billion. That would consequently reduce the amount that goes to Treasury. Otherwise, the plan leaves a lot for Congress to do. Specifically, Treasury's plan calls for a private guarantor backstop for all Fannie and Freddie mortgages, which would be securitized by Ginny May with a catastrophic government guarantee. How much is that going to cost? How much will it raise the cost of a mortgage? Homeowners want to know. That is TBD. Kelly? Uh, Diana, stay right there. We want to talk a little bit more about this now with someone who used to run Fannie Mae, Tim Myopoulos. Tim, it's great to have you here. Uh, what's most significant about this announcement as far as you're concerned? Well, thanks for having me. I think what's significant about it is that it's uh, obviously been 11 years in the making, but this is a really positive step forward in terms of getting to an ultimate resolution. This plan would preserve the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. Mm -hmm. it, it would... Uh, it would put lots of private capital in front of uh, taxpayer exposure. It would preserve some of the key uh, industry infrastructure in the form of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And if executed well, this would avoid a significant disruption of housing markets. So those are, would all be good outcomes. Right. That said, in fact, some of the reasons that you're citing have people, investors in this market, saying this plan doesn't actually change that much. Uh, I'll, I'll read you some quotes here. The scope and intentions are grand, while critical details are sketchy. It's not even clear if this is a real privatization, and it would represent as much intrusion as the previous systems and the existing one. What's your answer to that? I would say that this really builds on uh, discussions that have been going on now for six, seven, eight years. Um, this is not inconsistent with the uh, overall approach of uh, the last administration. It's very consistent with the efforts under three directors of Fannie and Freddie's regulator, FHFA, over the last uh, 10 years. So I think this is uh, really kind of staying the course uh, in terms of what the industry believes and what many policymakers believe is, is the right path forward. But there are a lot of details here that yet to be determined. And yeah. how those details are implemented could have some significant effect on what the ultimate uh, plan looks like. Diana, as Tim said, this would be an effort to get more private capital and, and lessen the taxpayer risk in these markets. But would you use the term or are people that you talk, or that you talk to going to use the word privatization here? Well, it's definitely privatization with a government backstop. And what I think is so interesting is not just this plan, but that recently the FHFA director, who is the conservator of Fannie and Freddie, asked Congress to be allowed to charter other companies in the same way that Fannie and Freddie are. So they could have this same backstop as well, which would open up competition within the market. But what investors really wanted, remember, it may have been 11 years ago, but it is short memory when you talk about an epic housing and mortgage crash that we had. So investors really want that backstop. And you can't guarantee you're going to get them back into this market if they don't have some kind of right. government guarantee, even if it's paid for by the private sector. Right, and that's where you don't want the disruption to the housing market either. Tim, finally, as Diana outlined, about $300 billion has gone to the U.S. Treasury from these companies. Uh, what happens to those profits for in the future? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that this plan would uh, contemplate is that the extent of that uh, flow of money to the Treasury would obviously at some point come to an end. Um, you know, it remains to be seen whether policymakers are willing to give up that, uh, that cash flow. Uh, but uh, one obvious way to try to recapitalize Fannie and Freddie is to allow them to retain their earnings. Mm -hmm. um, and they may need to supplement that with, uh, with additional uh, uh, offerings of securities into the market to raise public capital. But um, I, I think, uh, you know, th this is a it's inevitable, I think, that this cash flow needs to come to an end if people want to recapitalize these two companies. Yeah, so a step in that direction in any case. Thank you both. Appreciate it very much. Tim Myopoulos and our Diana Olek. Let's Thank get a check much. on.